Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually, right, my favorite theorem. So take everything with a grain of salt. Well, today I actually don't want to talk about a theorem, but more about a philosophy or concept, which when I first learned it, I found it very surprising. Um, not because it is very surprising, but just because I thought uh, like something like, oh, I could have done that. That's very interesting. With, well, it's certainly very interesting, but I couldn't have done that. It's, it's, it's one of these ideas that, that are so simple, actually, that they were really good, were really breakthroughs in, in this case, mathematics or maybe in, in knowledge itself uh, that are so simple that in hindsight, it's like, yeah, I, I could have done that. But no, certainly I couldn't have done that. And what I'm going to talk about is what is called a cellular automaton or basically um, how life can be actually built out of simple roots. And the main example I would like to keep you in mind is actually not mathematical in, in, in flavor, but it's basically the brain itself. So we can very easily, reasonably easily describe the brain locally, like there are certain cells and they satisfy certain rules, they follow certain rules. Um, but the brain itself as a structure is pretty complicated and nobody really understands what's going on. Um, but it's kind of seemingly built out of simple rules. And that seems to be a contradiction. But kind of this theory of cellular automata at least convinced me that it's not really a contradiction. So simple rules can generate very, very complicated patterns. That's the whole story that I'm going to tell you today. And yeah, it's actually pretty nice. So there will be lots of pictures and a lot of... Um, uh, video type things, so um, video, a video was in the video, <laughs> so I hope you will enjoy it. So let's get started. So the classical cellular automata is a very simple idea, and it's a one-dimensional thing, actually, and you can get, generate those two-dimensional pictures that I'm going to explain. So usually everything depends on the so-called seat, which is your, your starting configuration, and um, the idea is that black corresponds to the to, 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 uh, to one and white corresponds to zero. So you have two different states, black and white, zero and one, whatever you want to call it, and you choose a seat. And the seat in my picture here is always the first line. So the seat is basically an infinite, uh, well, vector or whatever um, of, of zeros and a one somewhere, a black box somewhere. The rest are just empty white boxes, as you can see, right? So that's my seat, my starting point. And then I have a list of rules. And the list of rules is very, very simple. There are only eight rules. And for each rule, you have two choices. So um, <laughs> yeah, um, basically what you do is the following. So you are one of those boxes, you are this box here, whatever, and you look at your two neighbors. And depending what your two neighbors are and what you are, you decide to change your state or not. So here in, in this rule set, is, so you're always in this middle box, okay, and so on. And these are your neighbors. And if you're a middle black box and your neighbors are also black, then you decide to change your state to white. If you are a middle black box, for example, here, and your neighbors are both white, then you also decide to change your state to white. Uh, while, um, for example, here, your neighbors are black and white, or white and black, whatever, so you keep your state. Okay, that's a set of rules. It's basically just a set of rules. You start with a seat, something, some uh, starting configuration, in this case, just a black box. And now each box in each step is, needs to decide um, whether it wants to Keep, keep on being what it is, black or white, or whether it wants to change its state. And you just give, give the, the whole game a, a certain list of, of rules. And these are the rules in this case. And then you get this picture and you just read it as follows. So you have your, your, your seat at the top and then this is the second, this is the third, this is a whatever kind of state. And you just illustrate it to make it nicer in, in one two-dimensional picture, but actually each horizontal slice is a state. So let's actually have a look uh, on, on, well, it, this set of rules generate this picture. So let's have a look how this actually works. So here is the same picture as before, or it, 
for a different rule set. And the first line is my seat. So I just have a black box somewhere and the picture is cut. So the white goes to infinity basically. And the first rule, for instance, you see here is that this black box looks at its two neighbors. It sees they are both white, so it changes its state. This white box looks at its two neighbors and it sees my two neighbors are white, so it changes its state and so on. And what I can do here is now I can um, increase the generation, so the state. So if I increase the generation, this is a very boring rule. So as you can see, this rule gets completely, uh, well, it, it, it's the same in, in, in each state. This is rule zero. I will explain the numbering of the rules in a second. Um, and here, above here, I can change the, the rules. So this is also a very boring rule, as you can see. Not very exciting. Um, so the, let's go to this rule. This rule, for example, uh, this white box has a black neighbor and a white neighbor, so it decides to, to stay white. This white box has two white neighbors, the one that is cut off here, and so it decides to change its state. So let's have a look what, what, what you generate here as a pattern. Aha, uh -huh, looks still very regular, but certainly different. So let's go somewhere here. This seems to be a good starting point, so let's have a look. Aha, uh -huh, so we get this picture. Interesting. That actually <laughs> actually was a good one. That looks that looks very regular at the outside, and then the inside it does something crazy. So that's a lot of fun already. Then again, this is generated from a very very basic set of rules. So I, I can play around with the number here, and I get really some very. Um, um, so this is basically a, a static uh, picture. This is a little bit weird, but you certainly see some kind of patterns. This is very static uh, and so on. And there's, uh, some crazy pictures like this one, uh, some kind of familiar pictures like this one, and it really depends. And you can scroll through it, and some, sometimes you get something. <laughs> so this looks regular, but um, in an interesting sense, in an interesting way, where this looks regular in a very boring way. So really depending on your state, on, on uh, sorry, on, on your, so the number here is, is my rule set and there's only a finite number of rule sets. I'm going to explain that. So it, it breaks here, as you can see, it breaks at two, five, six. I will going to explain that. Um, and yeah, de depending on your chosen rule set, I never change the, the, the seat. So my, my starting uh, point, depending on the chosen rule sets, you get pretty, pretty different pictures. Okay, so um, there's a certain number of rule sets and you already saw the number 256. And 256 shouldn't be a big surprise if you just make a count here. So for each of those uh, eight starting configuration, I have two choices, whether I want to keep my state or so 22222, two, 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 or I want to change it. And this is of course just two to the eight. So this is kind of the number of possible rule sets and each one of them generates some nice picture. And that's what's called uh, an elementary cellular automata. So kind of the easiest thing you can do. Uh, you can vary that a little bit. So I will show you a, a nice um, uh, example in a second. Like um, you can make it a little bit more two dimensional and then you make a rule set. So again, you are the middle box and you look what your neighbors are doing and you either change your state or not. And then this, this picture, for example, um, you're the middle box and you, you look how many white boxes are uh, your neighbors, but you don't care on the, for the position of the white boxes. So this here, have four white boxes as neighbors. Here we have one white, white box somewhere as a neighbor, which is illustrated in this bright grayish color. You have a darker grayish color, and this means three out of four neighboring boxes are black and so on. And you again generate a uh, some set of rules and you have a very simple seat. Uh, you, you choose a seat and you get some pretty random complex pattern thing, right? So that's the whole point. You, you, you start with a very simple, um, so this seat, you will see it in a second, it's actually pretty simple. And you have also a very simple set of rules, but what you get depends crucially on your starting rules in, in a basically almost uncontrollable way. And you might get something, you will see it in a second, 
completely regular, you might get something crazy like the picture you see right now, or basically anything in between. So it's, it's, it's this really funny idea that you can um, generate very complex patterns in this very, very silly and easy way, but right? just at two states, black and white, uh, using just just a very simple set of rules, and then it kind of get, gets completely crazy. So let's let's have a look at those things in action. So same idea as before. Here's my starting configuration, and here I can uh, my almost my starting configuration. My starting configuration is this one, and here I can uh, adjust the the rule set, which I call the number. So for of course, if I adjust the rule set for the starting configuration, nothing changes. As you can see, uh, this is the second generation. Oh, this is a very boring one. As you can see, this was really boring. So, <laughs> okay, uh, this is a rule set which makes everything white. So let's have a look at another rule set. Yeah, this is much more interesting. Okay, as you can see, this gets, ooh, this gets pretty crazy. Oh, this is a nice one. You see some patterns, but it's not quite clear what it is. So there's uh, some rule sets that generate this pattern. And again, these rule sets are ridiculously simple. It was one of those 10 rules you've seen before, which I will show you in a second again. This is pretty crazy. Oh. So let's have a look at another one. Oh, this looks very regular. So this is a, oh yeah. This is also very nice, but it's a, certainly a very regular set of rules that applies here. Yeah, you can, you can immediately tell what will be the next step. It's still, it's still an eye candy. Uh, some of them are extremely boring, like this one. <laughs> this is a very stable rule. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is also so. This this looks like a crazy rule. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's but that's roughly what I showed you before. Maybe it was what I showed you before. You can't really see what happens. It's, it gets pretty crazy. So you can scroll through here. And, get some pretty crazy stuff. Like this is completely random noise, basically. That was a picture from before. And this again, generated from, from a rule set like all the others here on the slider, like, like from a very similar rule set to, to this one, which is completely black. Um, it's just, it depends so much on the starting configuration. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, just in case, all this is, is Mathematica code and um, it's, it's down in the description. So if you want to play around with it. Right, so in this case, 10 simple rules, and you get, as you have seen, pretty different looking and crazy pictures. And it, it's really crazy. So um, it all goes back to what Conway called the game of life. And I will show it to you in a second, but it's basically exactly the same thing as I just showed you. You have a certain set of very simple rules and what you get is, um, so here are actually the simple rules if you want to pause the video and read it, not so important. Well, of course it is important, but it's not so important for the overall story, what the rules are precisely. Um, and you, you get something that looks very much like basically cells that you would observe in uh, whatever, in some kind of uh, laboratory. And it's, it's so amazing. And it, it really depends. You, you can't really tell what will happen. It depends crucially on the starting state and on the starting rules. So some rules are extremely boring again, Conway's Game of Life is one of them that is not so boring, that's kind of a little bit strange. Um, so let's have actually a look at, at Conway's original Game of Life. So here you can see Conway's Game of Life um, in a stable state. So what I'm going to do right now is I will initiate this by choosing, let, letting Mathematica basically choose a random state and then we'll, so a random seat, and then we'll, we'll just watch what happens. So let me, so I started with a random seed and this is now the game of life. As you can see, something happens. It's not quite clear what. It seems to stabilize, but not quite. Seems to still go on. Uh, and this might go on for a very, very long time. So in each, you should think of each of those black dots as a living cell. And depending on what the cell neighbors do, this thing just changes. And, I don't know, it, it looks kind of a mixture and that's the whole point about the game of life. It looks like a mixture between something completely random and something where you can actually see patterns, something very regular. Yeah, I don't know how you feel. I like to watch this. We can give it another go by, by restarting again. Uh, starting again, again, I have a random integer. I, I generate basically, uh, so I have random integers, I basically generate a random uh, 
a seat. So let's get it, let's get it to go again. And it kind of stabilizes and it still goes on. And it's, <laughs> it, it's extremely funny to watch. Again, the link is in the, down in the description if you, if you want to test it out. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Right, but again, the whole point is you start with a very, very easy uh, pattern, a very, very easy rule, and you, you're basically not sure what you get. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you're basically not sure what you get. And that's kind of then the, the statement. So the way to index those things, I already told you how it works. Um, so let me, let me go back to those elementary, the easiest ones. These are just kind of beefed up versions. Um, so you have those eight symbols so depending on your neighbors and on your original state, you decide to uh, change or not. And you would encode that as a, um, as a uh, uh, just by using 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So black, white, black. So this was black, black, black. And in this case, I choose, uh, 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 in this case, the rule is to change your state. And you just label all of those 256 elementary automata like this, right? This is, this is just the rules they follow. And you can just form out of this a binary number by just reading. So this is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, red um, binary. So in, in binary notation, which is 110. And that's kind of the. Um, the, the indexing set, which is actually due to Wolfram. So this is also what, what Mathematica uses. So rule number 110 is exactly this rule. You just read 110 in binary and um, you, you know exactly what the rule is. And I'm saying here there are exactly 88 non-equivalent of these rules, of these elementary cellular automata. Although I just told you there are certainly 265 combinations. Well, and the point is there are two obvious symmetries that you want to get rid of. There's clearly the symmetry which changes black to white, right? So this rule is the same as whatever you do it for all of them. So those two rules are certainly the same, but they will come up with a different number. And the only difference between them will be, well, that everything that's white in this picture will be black and everything that is black in this picture will be white. Certainly a symmetry you want to get rid of. And there's also the other symmetry. So if you look at this picture, it's already illustrated here. There's certainly a symmetry that you also want to get rid of, namely uh, a left and right flip symmetry. Right? So they are not, they, they're equivalent in, in any reasonable way. So you get rid of those two symmetries and you end up with 88 uh, different automata rule sets. And they basically come in. They not just basically they come in four types. Um, they either converge to a uniform state. We have seen this, right? So when I when I had those state and what just popped up was a black square. So this is a uniform state. If you want to try it, is something like two hundred twenty three. Um, they can go to a repetitive state, uh, which for example would be ninety five. We will see what some of them in a second. Um, they can remain basically in a, in a completely random state, which an example would be rule um, 150, or they are in this interesting range of these mixtures. Uh, an example is the famous rule 110, which has its own Wikipedia page uh, linked in the description, and I will talk about it in a second. Um, but let me show you more examples, namely examples for all of those three patterns. So here we are again, Mathematica generated pictures. This is what I just called uh, this regular state. Um, you start with, a, so here I started with a random seed. That's what you can see at the top. And almost immediately, or in this case, actually really immediately, it goes to a completely uniform state. And this would happen no, no matter with what kind of random seed I would start. It would immediately go to this uniform state. Okay. This is the one that gets into a repetitive state. Again, I started with some random seed, and you can see it, it, there's certainly a very clear symmetry, a repetitive symmetry here. So you, you go in the, in the middle, you can see it clearly, right? From state to state, it always basically alternates between two different options. 
And this always also goes very quickly, no matter from what kind of um, random uh, seed I start. The picture itself, so this picture basically always seems the same. This picture will depend on the random seeds that you will see. So the, the overall outcome will depend on uh, will depend on the random chosen seed, but the overall structure won't. It will always be some kind of that happens. And then the things that go completely random. So yeah, it shows a random seed, and this is the picture I get. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay, right. It's, it's basically random noise. It's completely a random picture. And then the interesting ones that certainly have some patterns of mixtures, that certainly have some patterns and they're very pleasant for the eye. So this is one of these, so this is 110, the famous 110. But it's not quite clear what the pattern is supposed to be. They're kind of in between being very regular and very random, which makes them so interesting and uh, so pleasant for the eye actually. So again, I say it again, this is this famous rule 110, which is kind of the same, of the same type as uh, Conway's original game of life. So here we are back again. Um, so the first example that was this picture, which was completely stable, is one of those uniform states. Then there's repetitive state, the random state, this picture where at least I wasn't able to see anything, and a funny example, 110. And then you would think, um, and the main, so I said again, the main point for me is uh, was when I learned this was really like this, oh, from a very, very, very simple pattern, a very, very simple rule, you can basically create anything. And the, the funny thing is, actually, you can, even in, in some mathematical strict sense. So rule 110, which is this one here, is what is called Turing complete. And that is basically a fancy term that any possible calculation that you will would ever be able to do on a computer can be simulated using rule 110. I mean, that's just a ridiculous statement, right? A very, very simple rule can simulate life itself if you want. Um, and then you shouldn't be too surprised that these things, if, if you know that, um, then you shouldn't be too surprised that these um, cellular automata actually have applications everywhere. So um, rule 30, for example, which is this one here, um, is one of those random rules. And it's, it, it, it's, it was used or is used, it's not quite clear um, whether, so, so Mathematica at one point used it to generate random numbers. They changed it, I think, but they used it at one point because it's basically completely random. Um, so you can generate reasonable random numbers using rules 30. 30. And you also have seen those, those funny things that are fairly regular in a, in a nice way. And for example, rule 90 is used in number theory and um, rule whatever 184 is used in traffic modeling, more applications in downstairs uh, in the description. But let me wrap up. So the whole point is that from a very, very simple set of rules, you can not just generate very nice pictures. I hope you enjoyed them again. The Mathematica code is in the description if you want to play around with it. But also basically you can generate life. So um, you can generate complicated patterns, easy patterns, repetitive patterns, random patterns, everything, just by a very, very easy starting configuration. Coming back to my first example. So the brain probably, I don't know for sure, of course, but probably is just one of those cellular automata in some, in some, some way or the other. This was vague enough that you, that you can't nail it down in some way or the other. Namely, it's kind of built from very, very simple local rules and all of its complexity comes from a process we don't understand, namely going from those local rules to more global patterns. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I actually really do hope that you play around a little bit with Mathematica or with other freely available code. Um, I will also link some in the description because Mathematica is of course, uh, you need to pay for it. Uh, anyway, I still hope you enjoyed the video and you will play around a little bit with those cellular automata because I promise you it's a lot of fun. And I also definitely hope to see you next time.